And I think everyone should be able to get to the point where you can produce a postcard. What I'd kind of like to do is just sort of step, like go through step by step how to produce an image. And every now and again, I'll stop and you'll have time to just sort of do things and talk to the people next to you and um, just sort of experiment with things and, and just have a bit of a bash at putting things together. Um, there's a couple of things we need to know about the screen at the moment. Um, at the top, you've got your file menus at the top, which is kind of like any other Microsoft product. Um, so everything to do with creating a new document or saving and all those sorts of basic computer applications are here up in the, in the file section. Down the left, you've got all these little icons for a bunch of different tools that do either selecting different areas of an image or manipulating an image or changing colors and things like that. Um, on the other side, on the right hand side, if you click on one of these tools over here, you'll get further details on the right hand side. So you select a tool on the left and all the fine details come up on the right to make adjustments. Uh, the other thing we need to know is how Photoshop works. If you think about it in an analog version, like a, a real life, old school, actual drawing style, uh, it works in layers. So if you can imagine a, your book in front of you, a piece of blank paper, and then on top of that you've got transparent layers that sit on top of it. So like a, a piece of like the OHT sitting on top. And then you can draw on one OHT, and then you can remove it, and you can put a new one on top, and you can keep adding layers on top to build up one single image. So, so hopefully some of the things we'll get through today. So we'll select an image and we'll resize it so we can make it the right size, make sure it's not too grainy, um, make sure it's not stretched out of proportion. Um, we'll add another one. Originally that guy wasn't at that beach. We'll get a second image and we'll cut some of the background out. I'll show you some ways to make that look kind of nice, not so clunky and cutty -outty. Um, then on this image, we'll add some text, and I'll show you how to put in uh, like the shadows, because this, this text has a little shadow underneath it, and it's got a line around the outside of the text, and this one looks kind of 3D. It looks like I did some sort of amazing 3D design stuff, but I really didn't. I clicked two boxes, and it made it look nice. Um, the other thing I did is I put what's called a lens flare behind there to make it look exciting, and I burnt the edges, because burning edges always makes photos look nice. So what we're going to look at first is just choosing the right size document, the right size image size, the right image size for what we want to produce. And in this case, we want to produce something that might go through a, a photo printer. So, so if we go up and select, if we go into the file section and we go new, we'll get all, everything in Photoshop has a million options, a million options. I'll show you the, the quick ways to get through to the things you actually need to know. So in this section, where it says document type, that's a little drop down menu, and it gives you a bunch of different image types. So we've got US paper, international paper. Um, and if you click on photo, then in the size, you'll get all of the standard photo sizes down the side. So, you know, when you go to Harvey Norman or Big W and you want to print out your photos, this will make it the exact right size for you to do. So if we can choose a landscape that's five by seven, and then in here, the resolution. So you can set that resolution to anything you want. The higher the resolution, the finer the details are. It also means the file size when you save it gets bigger and bigger. You can set that to ridiculous amounts so you can print a billboard size without being grainy. Um, Anything coming out of a photo printer, 300 is more than enough. It's also going to set the background contents as white. You can change that and you can make that transparent or any other color you want. In Photoshop, transparencies will come up as like a checkerboard. We'll see that in a moment. But if we start with a white background and you click OK, it thinks about it and then puts it up. So there's our photo size. We can zoom in on it and zoom out, but when that prints, that'll be a five by seven size photo print.